your camera and in the picture. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Professor Kirk, other uh, members of the faculty of ANU and dear students, welcome, namaskar, swagat. Uh, as uh, Dr. Kirk mentioned in some detail, you are part of a very, very important exchange program between India and Australia. And I'm so glad that uh, in 2019, what started as an important effort has grown both in numbers and also significance. And today we are very happy to welcome you here. I must say that my colleagues here, Deputy High Commissioner Sonit, Councillor Ms. Agarwal, uh, Rajiv and other colleagues uh, have worked uh, uh, very hard on putting together this interaction for today. I don't wish to make a very long speech. I would much rather go across and meet, uh, try to meet all of you or at least most of you and understand from you what you are looking for here and uh, what, is your, what is your plan for future uh, Dr. Kirk mentioned about uh, the, uh, the the network that it builds. He mentioned about the uh, the value of these networks, and you are with ANU now for life. So welcome, first of all, to Australia, and welcome with, well to India within Australia. <laughs> because, as you know, technically the High Commission of India is regarded uh, any country's embassy or High Commission is regarded as a part of their territory. That's the diplomatic norm all over the world. And uh, we, of course, have the High Commission here, which is the diplomatic representation. The Indian flag is also there as you walked past to this, this part. And I must say that you have brought very good sunshine with you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I was uh, earlier in the day, just a couple of hours uh, ago, along with uh, some of my colleagues, I was with another leading member of ANU, and we, we, we were having this conversation about the Canberra weather uh, changing from morning. To, to, to the afternoon and in the morning I was driving into Canberra uh, through fog <laughs> and today we see sunshine uh, at this hour so it's uh, of course a warm welcome to you but also uh, reminds you perhaps of home yeah. in terms of sunshine yeah. so how many days have you been here about a week or less than that last three months. Month, three months three months you, have, you are already here okay wonderful so you have become Australian <laughs> So, what have you learned about Australia? <laughs> Louder. So many things actually. Two things. In Canberra, the weather. In Canberra, the weather. Yeah. Okay. Any, anything else? A multicultural <laughs> Wonderful. And what was that? Life balance. Cook the food. How to cook the food? They cook the food. How to cook? How to cook the food? How to cook the food? But that you could have learned in India, <laughs> which means you did. You missed the opportunity. We are having the mess in the in our campuses, so we usually eat there. Oh, but aren't mess the mess? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't much of a, a hosteler in my own time. The first time I was in a hostel was when we joined the Masuri Academy. So I don't really know much about the mess and the kitchen and the hostels, but I, I take your point. Look, this is a very important point you mentioned. As I was walking in here and I saw many of you dressed in different costumes. It's a microcosm, it's, it's, a, it's a reflection of India. Some of you are in traditional dresses, some of you are in Western dresses, but also I must say, so good to see a good sprinkling of ladies in this. <laughs> And I say I see uh, some of you in kurta pajama, some even in dhoti and kurta. <laughs> so wonderful representation of in India, and thank you very much ANU for uh, for encouraging them to carry their culture, just not in appearance, but also in values, because it is really in the values that Australia and India are very similar. You have uh, I don't know how many of you were following cricket when in 2000 uh, 2001. That famous cricket test match took place in which Dravid, Dravid and Lakshman forged that partnership and turned the test match on its head. I'm not mentioning it to embarrass our Australian friends. <laughs> but I'm just mentioning it because uh, on field, Australia and India, of course, in cricket, for example, are competitors, but friendly competitors. Very cordial relations on field and off the field. And like that, the two countries are also very close cooperation. We both are democracies. You said diversity, multiculturality. There is a place in Australia called Darwin. It's in the Northern Territory. 
Uh, we went there a few years ago. At the airport, we landed past midnight. And next day, there was a conference, and somebody in the conference said that they could have been forgiven to believe that they were in a Southeast Asian city. <laughs> That's the magnitude of diversity. So I come from Northern India, a place called Lucknow. Many of you come from North. I can see some of you come from East or South uh, and West. Uh, India is different things, not only in terms of costume and culture, but potential and capabilities. But the India of future which is taking place is not taking place in one part of India. It is taking, it is taking shape all across. And who is giving India that shape? You are giving India that shape. Why? Because India, as we all know, is a very young country. More than 50% uh, are below 25. I think more than 65% per are below 35. So the future obviously belongs to the generation, which is right now going through the universities and equipping itself with education and skills. And what will it do? It will get you a good degree. And what will you do with that degree? You will get a good job. You will look after yourself, you will enrich yourself, you will raise families, you will bring glory to yourself, your families, your village, your communities, your city, your friends, they will feel proud of you. But most importantly, you will also contribute to the country. You will contribute to the humanity in whatever discipline you are pursuing, science, medicine, physics, chemistry, humanities, information technologies. Your contribution will define in many ways, it will shape, it will contribute to what the future will be. When I was studying chemistry 40 years ago, if I had pursued research in chemistry, I would have been doing something different. Similarly, when you study and you go on to do whatever you do, you will be contributing to your country, but also in some measure to the humanity. But I must tell you one very important thing and last thing for now, and then I will go around and interact. The most important contribution that you can make and you, like many of your other friends and colleagues who have been to a new or other university that or will go there, they will make, they actually are making, is to the relationship between Australia and India. What is the relationship between two countries? It's not the relationship merely between two pieces of land. Although Australia is a continent, and they call India or the South Asia a subcontinent, Many of you would perhaps know that Australia is uh, more than two times in size. If you include the territories, uh, more than three times the size of India. But it's not a relationship just between the two governments. It's a relationship at the end of the day between people. And when people interact, they form bonds like you meet, like you have your friends from your college days. There are WhatsApp groups now. 40 years ago, there was not even a mobile phone. Technology is evolving, relationships are evolving, but one thing remains the same. It is the centrality of human beings in the life. Whatever we do at the end of the day, we all are human beings. And therefore, we exist as much as for ourselves, but also in interaction with one another. So it is through your contribution and the contribution of people like you that the relationship such as Australia and India's which are democracies, diverse democracies, well-endowed countries in their own rights, it is with your contribution that this relationship will grow. So I many a time call this relationship between the students, between the people, not only a human bridge, but also a bridge to the future. Because this is what you are shaping here. You are doing something that you are occupied with in your labs, in your classrooms, in your field work, through your papers, through what collaboration you will pursue in future, you may not even think about it, that you are contributing to something as big as that, a bridge to the future. But this is precisely what you are doing. Professor mentioned about uh, Dr. Chernupati Jagdish. We are very proud of his Indian roots, so is he. And he is uh, at the top position, if I may say so, in the, acad in the scientific academic world of Australia. A contribution like that which enriches not only his own field of work, uh, his own country, makes us proud of his roots, but also look how he has brought all of you together. So whatever you do, don't lose the sight that anything that you do is going to contribute to something bigger. 
it's like rivers gradually getting together and ultimately merging into the ocean actually forming the ocean so you are young energetic streams of uh, of talent of knowledge which will grow in size which will grow in its flow and as you go into the future i see a very good shape of your own futures of our country's future and also the future of australia india relationship emerging through your contributions so i would like to thank you for that and once again welcome you over here Thank you very much for that kind introduction, Your Excellency Mr. Bagley. Thank you very much indeed for inviting us and hosting us here at the Indian High Commission. It's always an absolute pleasure being back in this beautiful courtyard in this beautiful building. So we are here to celebrate what we call the ANU Future Research Talent Scheme. And this is a, a flagship program for the Australian National University, specifically for science, medicine and for engineering. And the scheme, and I saw many of the students uh, on Friday, and we had an opening event there. And as I explained then, the scheme has its origins in a brilliant idea by our friend and colleague, uh, Professor Chunapati Jagadish, and his wife, Vidya. And Jagadish is a renowned in Indian who has made his career here at the Australian National University. He's now the president of the Australian Academy of Sciences. He's a brilliant man who had the brilliant idea of putting aside some money and he and his wife video created an endowment to support students initially just three or four coming across from India to come and experience research here at the Australian National University and spent two or three months doing research in the research labs that we have here and we took this idea encouraged by Professor Dagadish and we decided to build on this to create the future research talent scheme and as you can see, we now have a large number of people coming across. And we had, the first time we did this separate from Jagadish or together with Jagadish was in 2019. And in 2019, we brought across 51 future research talent scholars plus the Jagadish Endowment Scholars. And they came from 19 different Indian institutions. And these are the very top Indian institutions. These are the institutions with which we, the Australian National University, want to forge partnerships, research partnerships, education partnerships, institutions with which we want to collaborate, not just this year, next year, but over the coming decades. This is going to be really important to us. And when we thought about how do we create these relationships, how do we create the partnerships, the answer we came to, inspired by Jagadish, was that we do that through the students. We do that through the best students that these institutions have. We bring them here, we introduce them to our students and to our staff, and we form relationships and we form networks. And you heard me say a little bit about that last Friday. So, of course, 2019 was a great start and then came 2020, which was not a great year. So we had the COVID years, 20, 21, 22. We continued to run the scheme virtually. We had supervisors here talking through virtual means with scholars in India. We had a low level scheme running with typically sort of 20 students each time. And then in 23, we brought it back again. We had 96 scholars here, this time 77 from, Indone uh, from India, 19 from Indonesia. We brought in Indonesian students as well. And that involved 41 different universities. This year, of course, we have, um, this year we have 91 scholars, 73 of them come from India. I think there is about 60 of you here today. And we have some from Indonesia and we have one from Sri Lanka as well. And they come from 40 different institutions. And it is wonderful to have you here. Eight of the people who have come as future research talent scholars are currently enrolled for PhDs at the ANU. They came back. We have at least four more from last cohort coming back to do PhDs. So you are here doing a two or three month project. As you know, a PhD is a three or four year project and is the start of a research career. And many more went on to other universities, to Caltech, to Oxford, to MIT, to Johns Hopkins. That's where all our former FRT scholars are doing their education, some with us and some elsewhere. I talked about the fact that we are looking, the, one of the reasons we do this is to build relationships with institutions in India and to build networks of colleagues, of friends, of, of people from around the world. India and Australia have a great deal in common. In particular, both our countries have a commitment towards high quality education, to science innovation and research. These are values 
that we share. In terms of education, India is the second largest source of international students for the ANU. There's currently more than 500 Indian students studying at the ANU. And with regard to research, we already have a lot of collaborations. Staff at the ANU have co-authored research pro uh, papers with staff from over 300 Indian institutions. It's really a comprehensive network of collaboration. There are grants that we hold jointly. I noticed that Professor Seeming Mang Mann is here today from the John Kern School of Medical Research. He holds an Australia-India Strategic Research Fund grant and is one of several staff at the ANU who've held this specific sort of grant. We have multiple agreements with Indian institutions. We have dual and joint PhD degrees with IIT Madras and with the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore and we're looking to increase these. So as I said, we are looking not for the short term but for the medium and long term to build really meaningful strong relationships with the top institutions in India and you are a core part of that and just to repeat what I said on Friday you are now part of the ANU you are here for two or three months and you will go back to your institutions in India and I hope that some of you will come back and study with us and do PhDs and some of you will go on to other great universities around the world you are part of our ANU network. Some of you may work here again, some of you may not, but you will always be part of our ANU network. Always remember us, always know that you are welcome back at the ANU as research collaborators, as, re as friends, as visitors, and I hope that we will see you back. So congratulations once again to all of the students. Thank you once again, High Commissioner, for hosting us here. This is really important for us. We're really excited about it, and it's, uh, a real pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you.